You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. I was asked on Saturday night, T-Bob and I were doing whiskey and wine, do you feel better or worse about the team after the Nichols game? And my answer, not to be Switzerland here, was I don't feel differently at all. I want to be very clear about something before we go any further. I want to be very, very clear about this before I take another step in any of my commentary. I am not telling you, I am not telling you that I am thrilled with what happened Saturday night. I'm not telling you, it was great, nothing to worry about, all good. Not saying that. I'm also not going to be the guy that comes here today and pounds my fist on the table and yells and screams and tells you how awful this is, how bad they're going to be, how they can't run the ball, don't stop the run, they can't even get past nickels without a fight, they're terrible, they're going 6-6. Six and six. I'm not telling you that. Because I have done this job for long enough I have gone and watched every play stone cold sober, unlike a lot of y'all Saturday night, of all these garbage games that LSU plays that nobody wants to see. I watch really good teams be lethargic and sleepwalk their way through a bunch of games that nobody wants to play or see. After the game on Saturday night, Brian Kelly said it point blank. He said this was a tired football team. And about all the – can you play that real quick? Here was Brian Kelly after the game. Well, I'd start off with um, saying how impressed I was with Nickel State. I, I thought they played their tails off. You could tell how much it meant to those young men to play here in Tiger Stadium and have a chance to uh, to play LSU. They were physical, and they controlled the clock. Made it a, a great football game from that perspective. I'm happy we won the football game, but certainly there's a lot of areas that um, I'm looking at the things that we have to do better. Certainly, that was a team that was tired, did not play its very best. You know, we had a long week. It was a short week, and it showed. They worked their tails off this week, but they just did not have... Okay, that's it. I don't need the minute long. Brian Kelly said point blank, this was a tired football team. They flew out on Sunday. They played on Sunday. They flew out on Sunday. They got home at 5 a.m. Monday. They had to practice Tuesday. Short week. You spent all offseason getting jacked up to play USC. You play a hard-fought game. You lose a close one at the end. And then you got to turn around in six days and play an FCS opponent nobody wants to play. I get it. A lot of you are going to say, they're scholarship kids or NIL and you got to show up. The reality is it's human nature. Alabama played South Florida. It was 14-13 to at Nick Saban Field at Brian Dennehy Stadium in the fourth quarter. And they boat raced him late. Notre Dame, after going on the road and beating Texas A&M, comes home to play Northern Illinois and loses. It's human nature. The best team ever at LSU before the 2019 team was the 2011 Tigers. Dominant a team as LSU's ever put on the field. They were in a 14-7 game at halftime against Western Kentucky. A Western Kentucky team that was 5-5. Five and five. It was 14-7 at half, and then LSU took over in the second half. I get it. You look at the game against Nichols on Saturday, and you're going, man, all the stuff that went wrong. Uh, Xavion Thomas returning a kickoff from eight yards deep. Will Campbell had a far, false start. You gave up a fourth down conversion. Two 13-play drives that ate up half a quarter, both of them. Um, you had another disconcerting signals penalty. You miss, a t- you miss a field goal at the end of the first half. You come out the second play of the second half, and they were on a 67-yard touchdown. It's 23-21. You're going, what in the hell is happening? You know what happened after that? LSU put together a touchdown drive. First play of the next possession, you force a fumble. Five plays later, you're in the end zone again. It's 37-21. You force a three and out. You get the ball back. You score again. It's 44-21. You took control. You dominated the game. I'm just not going to be super pissed about what transpired. You played a game nobody cared about. You played a game nobody cared about, and that's what generally happens sometimes when you play games like that that nobody cares about. You get efforts like that. It was not a good effort. It was not good but I just don't care because whatever they do Saturday against South Carolina will be dramatically more meaningful and influential than what happened on Saturday night. But I do have a couple of takeaways. Remember last week when we were sitting here and we are doing our what to watch, I told you my number one thing, my number one thing, what to watch. What was it? My number one thing, get out of there healthy. 
Last year, you lost Zy Alexander with a torn ACL against Army. These garbage games nobody cares about. There's more risk than reward. And you lost Jacoby and Guillory for the season. By the way, Jacoby and Guillory was your highest rated defensive tackle, according to Pro Football Focus, coming out of that game. You are in a world of trouble at defensive tackle right now. Somebody you are not expecting has to step up and be awesome for you because the best guy you had at your biggest question mark position is now done for the season. I feel gutted for Jacoby and Guillory. It sucks just as bad as it did for John Emery. Guillory, a fifth-year guy who bided his time. He's played in 41 games. The other day was just his fifth career start. This was supposed to be his time, and now he's done for the season because of a stupid garbage game a stupid garbage game that nobody wants to see played, and he ruptures his Achilles, and he's done for the year. Before the season started, over at LouisianaSports.net, Hunt Palmer had us do a station survey, the most indispensable player. Hester and I both said Jacoby and Guillory. Didn't say he's your best player, but he's your most indispensable because you don't have anyone at that position even close to his ability. And now he's gone. You're in a world of hurt right there. Brian Kelly, after uh, in his Monday press conference, circled back to the Nichols game, and he was. They brought up the the feeling of uh, of whether or not they they were dominant or couldn't be dominant at the um, at the line of scrimmage, and he pushed back against that. And yes, Nichols had a couple of long drives in the first half. They had a good scheme at halftime on the 67-yarder. Hat tip, that's a good, that's a well-coached team with Tim Rebo. But Brian Kelly also said on Monday that defense is dictating what LSU is doing. If they're going to put eight, nine men in the box, then LSU is going to throw it. And why wouldn't you? I would submit this to you. For everyone sitting here today saying, why aren't they running the football? Why can't you run the football against Nichols? LSU threw it 38 times and ran it 21 on Saturday. And some of you were going, they didn't even try to run the football. Okay. Today, Brian Kelly said, and I don't know which one this is, Muse, but Brian Kelly said they had about 34 or 35 run plays called. But they checked out of them because of the defensive look. Here's here's what I would submit to you. Didn't we spend a decade collectively, LSU media fans, whatever, didn't we spend a decade nailing less miles to the wall for continuing to run against eight and nine-man boxes? Didn't we spend a decade bemoaning, toss, dive, too tight in a fullback, three yards in a cloud of dust, running it when they're giving you the pass? Didn't we spend 10 years complaining about that? And now you got an offense where when they're showing you eight and nine-man fronts, we're going, all right, we'll throw it to our, our bevy of freak show wide receivers. Okay. Yes, throw it to Kyron Lacey. Yes, throw it to Tradez Green. Throw it to Jawan Johnson, who, by the way, caught all three targets and got in the end zone. Yes, I would like to see that. Instead of running foolishly into nine, eight and nine-man boxes. There was this video that was circulating the internet after the LSU-USC game, a one play where LSU got stacked up at the line of scrimmage. If you freeze frame it, it was nine on seven. SC had nine red jerseys in the box to seven, including the running back, for LSU. Six can't block nine. Yes, throw the ball if that's what they're giving you. A couple other things. I love the rotation. Kamorian Pimpton was out with an ankle injury. You saw Tredez Green get his first career touchdown, the first touchdown of the day. You saw Bo Bordelon put on the 89 jersey, used as a jumbo blocker. I love that. We talked about it last week. Pimpton missed a block on a big play on the third and one where John Emery got tackled for a loss. Yes, give me the jumbo tight end as an extra blocker. Uh, Tyree Adams started at left guard. We saw Paul Mabenga go in late in the first half. They rotated those guys. You got a bunch of people experienced. Jawan Johnson was targeted on, a, on a, the second play of LSU's second drive. It wasn't like LSU got a big lead and then they emptied the bench. Jawan Johnson was in there on the second offensive series. By the way, the second offensive snap of the game, Caden Durham was in there, but that's when Will Campbell had the false start, and so it was first and 15, and they took him out. You targeted Shelton Sampson on the fourth offensive snap of the game. It was complete downfield, but Nuss threw him out of bounds. You got young guys in early and throughout. Uh, Spears and Kylan Jackson were in early at safety. Zy Alexander played terrific at cornerback in the second half. 
We got to see Gabe Relliford, who was one of your highest-graded players on PFF play. I've told y'all, Collage Cobbins, Gabe Relliford, that's what it's supposed to look like. Those two dudes are going to be awesome, and I would not be surprised if they find a way to get Gabe Relliford more involved this year as the season goes along because he is that good a player and he is ready to contribute. I get it. Swinson and Shand and Savion Jones and Deshaun Womack, who was injured and didn't play, uh, they held him out this past week. You got tons of guys at defensive end, but I'm telling you, Relliford is ready and is going to be a contributor this year. I'm not telling you he's going to be a superstar this year. I'm telling you he's going to be a contributor because he's ready to be a contributor. Uh, a couple of other notes. Nathan Dybert was back kicking off after Aaron Burrell had a little bit of an injury. Uh, Xavion Thomas, 51-yard uh, return after the safety was awesome. You have a return game again. I didn't love him taking the ball out eight yards deep. How about P.J. Woodland? Had a beautiful TFL on the second. Um, I'm sorry, it was on the second play of the game for Nichols um, on, a, on, a, on a corner blitz. Uh, P.J. Woodland also had a forced fumble, recovered the fumble. He forced shades of Tyron Matthew. Kyron Lacey, three receiving touchdowns. We got to see Ricky Collins go in at quarterback, and not just at the end of the first half, but in a position where he had to throw the, throw the ball. Beautiful 12-yard out to Xavion Thomas right there, cold off the bench. You love to see it. Hated to see you miss the field goal at the end of the first half, but there was a lot of good that you did like in this football game. I get there's a lot you didn't. I get it. You want to see LSU go out and score 70 against an FCS opponent. But everything Brian Kelly said is true. You had a tired team, a disinterested team. It wasn't their best game, but I just don't care. As long as you're going to schedule games against Nichols, you're going to expect the same effort, energy, all that sort of stuff that you get from fans who go in late and it's lackadaisical and you leave early and it's a blowout. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So you want to keep scheduling these games? By the way, I get that you have to schedule them. I get it. Because as I keep saying, you're not going to put yourself at a competitive disadvantage. If the rest of the country is going to schedule an FCS opponent, you're going to schedule an FCS opponent. But when you do that, don't bitch and complain when you get an effort like you did on Saturday. Yeah, you could go score 70 like Ole Miss did against Furman, or maybe you get into a dogfight against a really good team like Nichols. It's what it is. You know what I really care about? Go on the road and win your conference opener against South Carolina Saturday. Let's come back here on Monday and see what the conversation's like based on what happens in that game, because it's vastly more consequential than whatever the heck that mess was on Saturday night with an FCS opponent in here that nobody cares about. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.